Hori wana da ta da? What do ya wana da da da? Have no da wa ta da ta da. We could switch to Progressa da da. Oh yeah? We could switch to Progressa and sa. Mka? We could sa and have to buy some za. Oh yeah? Let's switch to Progressa da da and get some za with the money we saw. Yeah! Now we know we're gonna da da da. These days, nothing is normal and everything is weird. But you could still save big when you switch to Progressive. It might just be the most normal thing you da to da. Quote to da at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. As we inch closer to the start of the 2016 season, there's some good news coming our way. First, Formula One plans to go social. They plan to run contests on social media to choose the driver of the day. Yes, they do. A change of heart from Bernie. Or maybe he's just realized that he could sell a sponsor for this category too. <laughs> Let me admit, this idea is done to deaths by every possible brand on social media. In that case, Pirelli's innovations might just interest you. They plan to make tyre strategies for each driver available in real time during the races. All of this should hopefully help Pirelli better their otherwise horrible brand image in Formula 1. But I think something is wrong. Pirelli suddenly seems to be making a lot of sense. <laughs> they also said, let's focus on the overtaking and not the speed of the Formula 1 cars. And I think I somewhat agree with them. F1 has proved that it is by far the fastest single-seater racing series in the world. I think it is now time for it to prove that it isn't the most boring one as well. <laughs> The true potential of social media will be harnessed by Formula One only if they let their fans participate in crucial decisions next. <laughs> like, for example, what color should Lewis Hamilton dye his hair next? Vote now. Or who should Pastor Maldonado crash into next? <laughs> or how much money should teams be paid for their performance? <laughs> in which case... Should Mercedes be paid at all? They bored the boredom out of Formula 1. Jean Todt spoke in favour of team payments a few days ago. He spoke what every fan with even a little amount of common sense has thought about years ago. Payment restructuring. <laughs> While that may never happen, Formula 1 seems to have agreed to reduce powertrain costs in the coming seasons. I think to make the other teams on par with Honda, they should agree to lower horsepower too. <laughs> <laughs> Even more so now because reports that said that Honda have miraculously found some 223 horsepower during the course of winter were bashed by the manufacturer themselves. While we really hope for Honda's recovery, there's news that the new Mercedes power unit is a step forward. I think this means that Mercedes will win in 2016 again. <laughs> Let's tell us something we don't know. On the same note, how can teams passing crash tests be news at all? I mean, shouldn't it be the other way around? <laughs> well, crash testing is most important in this era, given that we have Pastor Maldonado on the grid. <laughs> <laughs> there has to be a pastor joke. I really wonder if Renault will need any more crash tests though. <laughs> Guess what, Kunal? There might just be another Maldonado in the offing. So Pastor's cousin, Manuel Maldonado, he's racing Italian F4 this season. <laughs> I don't know if he's a paid driver as well, but I never thought there could be two of a kind. Ooh, double trouble! <laughs> <laughs> Bernie said that domination would be bad for Mercedes. If I were Mercedes, I'd be a little wary. Is this some sort of warning from Mr. E to slow the cars down? <laughs> but I truly wonder how can domination be bad for Mercedes? I mean, I understand it is bad for the sport, but for Mercedes, it means more money, more publicity and more champagne. How can this be bad for 
anyone. Well, more champagne could be a problem if you're Lewis Hamilton and your preference is vodka. <laughs> <laughs> all in all, I hope that Formula One fixes its engines and not races. Abolish team orders. I know that's the punchline from our latest video episode, which talks about match fixing in Formula One. There's a link in the description for you to click on so you can watch us. If Johnny Herbert has Bernie and the FIA's ears, we might just have a race each on Saturday and Sunday. One for the drivers' championship and other for the constructors. I think this is a good idea to explore, especially given the conflict of interests in the current format for the teams and drivers. I wonder if someone in Formula One is taking stock of good ideas. You know, we've shared quite a few, <laughs> like what car shots on the podium. <laughs> <laughs> the other good idea that Formula One should and does plan to explore is the Halo addition to the cockpits. If drivers have their way, this could see the light of day in 2017. This will make open wheel racing safer. And of course, being an F1 driver will now have a halo effect. Literally so. <laughs> <laughs> and so now it seems that Max Verstappen is the new Senna. I think it is time for the sport to agree on his new avatar already. From being the next Schumacher to now being the new Senna, I just think he's going from one legacy to another. And like Carlos Sainz Jr. rightly asked, if Max is Senna, who am I? <laughs> well, I think Carlos is best being Carlos. His father, a two-time world champion. Like father, like son, we hope. In all of this, I wonder how Jos Verstappen feels. Why is no one comparing his son to him? <laughs> And amid all these comparisons, Hollywood actor Sylvester Stallone said that Arid and Senna wanted him to play Senna in the next movie, Senna. <laughs> A Rocky Balboa version of Art and Senna. I wonder how this would look on television. <laughs> well, finally, we come to the concluding section of this episode. Red Bull Racing made Max Verstappen drive his F1 car up a snow-clad slope to build some off-season hype. Thank you, Red Bull, for pushing the limits of Formula 1 marketing to new heights. Quite literally so. But there's claims that Red Bull would be penalized for this stunt. I think that's the second part of their off-season publicity, which most seem to overlook. You know, the same thing happened when David Coulthard last drove on the roads of Mumbai almost a decade ago. The last time a Red Bull racing run happened, we were there too. <laughs> and we were there with David Coulthard himself. What a super retirement job he has. <laughs> and it seems Masa aims to become a social media reporter post his retirement from Williams. He pushed the limits of social media coverage as he gave away news of a player transfer to Chelsea in a sport called football. You know where they say you need one ball to play. <laughs> Since the retirement benefits at Williams will never match those at Ferrari, Massa's probably going to have to try a little harder. <laughs> and Robert Dornbos, I think that's the pronunciation. A driver who I don't really think pushed his limits while he was in Formula 1 has managed to push the limits of technology outside of the sport. He's made some major headway with a touch and feel product in the adult entertainment industry. I think it's best we just let you Google that to know more. <laughs> well, thank you for tuning in yet again. We will see you next week in audio and in video. We really hope you've been hearing us and watching us. Adios! I'm Annie Apple, and I'm here to invite you to come and listen to my new podcast series, Raising a Pro. It's the most intimate sports-related conversations you will hear. Each week, we explore the journeys of some of your favorite NFL players through the eyes of those that know them best. From Joe Burrow, DeAndre Hopkins, 
Miles Garrett, Ezekiel Elliott, Nick and Joey Boza, just to name a few. With exclusive insights and information, we leave no stone unturned. Subscribe now to Raising a Pro on your favorite podcast app.